Welcome to another video. Now that we have talked about arithmetic sequences and arithmetic series, it's time to jump on to another very, very common sequence and series called a geometric sequence. And from there, we're going to talk about geometric series when we add up the terms of that geometric sequence on which it's based. So we'll talk about what exactly a geometric sequence means, how it's built, how to figure them out uh, from one term or maybe two terms, um, deal with what the, 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 the sequence should look like formulaically, and then in the next video we'll talk about the series, how to add those terms up. There's some really interesting formulas that we get. Uh, we'll talk about something called convergence and divergence of a series. That's about it. So what a geometric sequence is, it's actually quite similar to an arithmetic sequence, except that where, when you had an arithmetic sequence, what you did to get from term to term is you added. You added the same number over and over and over and over and over again, term by term by term by term by term. You added the same thing over and over again. And therefore you had what was called a common difference, which meant if you took two successive terms and you subtracted them, you can do the same thing over and over and over again. That was what number you're adding. Well, we have something similar, except instead of adding the same number over and over and over again, we're multiplying. So geometric sequences and series are built on the idea of taking some starting number and multiplying to get to the next term and the next term by the same number over and over and over. Now that number that you're multiplying by is called the common ratio. And the idea goes back to an arithmetic sequence and says, all right, arithmetic sequence, if I took two terms and I subtracted, that's going to be the number that I'm actually adding. Well, if I take two terms here and I divide them, the second term by the first term, or the third term by the second term, or the fourth term by the third term, and I divide them, it will give me the number that I'm actually multiplying to get to term, to term, to term, to term. So what we need to know is very similar to arithmetic. You need to know where you start. You need to know what number you are multiplying to get to the next term and every subsequent term after that. That number that you're multiplying is called the common ratio because when you divide two successive terms, it's going to give you the same fraction every time. Now, sometimes we get a whole number, but it still is a fraction. Common, same, ratio, fraction. I hope you're seeing the similarity between this and arithmetic sequences. They're built the same way, except instead of adding over and over, we are multiplying over and over and over again. You still need to know a starting spot. And that's what all this says. So it's a sequence or the ratio between any two successive terms is constant called the common ratio. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at these examples. We're going to figure out which ones are arithmetic which ones are geometric and which ones are neither. Um, sometimes you have a sequence that has a definite pattern, but you don't exactly know, well, maybe you do know what it is, but you don't uh, have the ability to call it arithmetic or geometric because it doesn't fit that, that model. And so let's take a look at these. When we take a look at something like this, 2, negative 6, 18, negative 54, 162, if we're trying to classify this, maybe we try to figure out if it's arithmetic first. Arithmetic means that you're adding the same number over and over again. How you can always determine if you have an arithmetic sequence is take two terms and subtract them. This minus this. So negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. Okay, take these two terms. 18 minus negative 6 is not negative 8. That's 24. Well, if you don't get the same common difference, then you're not adding the same number over and over again. Obviously, we're not doing that. If I had to add from 2 to negative 6, well, that would be negative 8. And then negative 6 to 18, I'd have to add, I'd have to add 24. Well, that's definitely not a common difference. This is not arithmetic. Let's see if this one's arithmetic. From 2 to 9, I'm adding, let's see, 7. From 9 to 16, I'm adding 7. From 60, 16 to 23, I'm adding 7. From 23 to 30, I'm adding 7. This is arithmetic. This would be a sequence like we dealt with two videos ago. This is an arithmetic sequence because of the common difference. If I were to subtract two successive terms, 9 minus 2, 7. 16 minus 9, 7. 23 minus 16, 7. 30 minus 23, 7. Do you see how taking two terms and subtracting them is giving me the number I'm adding over and over and over again? This would be arithmetic. with a common difference of seven. It's not geometric because I'm adding to get from term to term to term. Let's go back to this one for a second. Now, since it's not arithmetic, maybe we think about it being geometric. Can I multiply to get from here to here to here to here to here? We can think of it one of two ways. Sure, you could think, what do I multiply by to get from two to negative six? Uh, will it be negative three? 
can I keep doing that? Ne six, negative 6 times negative 3. Well, that would be positive 18. Negative times negative is a positive. 18 times negative 3. Well, that's negative 54. Times negative 3, that's 162. That is what's happening. This is definitely a geometric sequence, but you can also think about it this way. If you take any two successive terms and divide them, So negative 6 divided by positive 2, or 18 divided by negative 6, or negative 54 divided by 18, or 162 divided by negative 54. In each case, we get the same number. The number that you get by dividing is the same, that common ratio is the same number that you are actually multiplying to get from term to term to term. So this is definitely geometric because we have the same exact ratio between any two successive terms, meaning you are multiplying by the same number over and over and over and over and over again to get term by term by term. The next term can be found by multiplying by another negative three and another negative three and another negative three. This is geometric with a common ratio of negative 3. The common ratio is called R. So when we hear that word, that common ratio, common difference was D. It was a D because it was a difference. It's a term we're actually adding from term to term to term. The common ratio is called R for ratio, and it stands for the number you're multiplying in a geometric sequencing from term to term to term. In our case, it's just negative 3. That's really the difference between arithmetic and a geometric. Arithmetic, you're just adding. Whatever number you're adding over and over and over again, that's D. That's your common difference. Um, geometric, you're, you're just multiplying. So whatever number you're multiplying by over and over and over and over again to get that sequence, that's your common ratio. That's R. You, all, of course, can find them by subtracting two successive terms. And it's the same for all of them. You have an arithmetic sequence. Or dividing two successive terms. It's the same for all of them. Every pair, you have a geometric sequence. Now, how about the next one? So 1, 2, 4, 7, 11, 16. Well, we can try, let's try geometric first. In order to get from 1 to 2, I would multiply by 2. That's great. In order to get from 2 to 4, oh, I'd multiply by 2. That, that's also great. Maybe this is geometric. In order to get from 4 to 7, I multiply by 2? No. So even though the first two terms, if I were to divide them, 2 divided by 1 is 2, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, but 7 divided by 4 is not 2. And in order for this to be called a certain type of sequence, you can't say like, oh, it's geometric for a little while, and then arithmetic for a little while, and then, I don't know, for a little while. It doesn't really work. Um, so it has to maintain the same exact pattern if you're going to call it one of these things. So this common ratio would be, well, the A ratio would be 2 and 2 and then not 2. This fails to be geometric because I'm not multiplying by the same number to get from term to term to term. I'm not actually multiplying at all to get from term to term to term. It looks like it may be times 2 times 2 times, but that right there starts failing it. This is not geometric. So maybe we try uh, arithmetic and we go, all right, well, let's try to add. So if I was adding from here to here, I would add 1. From here to here, I would add 2. That already fails. Because a common difference for arithmetic says, I should be able to take 2 minus 1, and 4 minus 2, and 7 minus 4, and get the same thing. That's what a common difference would do for arithmetic. That was the last video. 2 minus 1 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. 7 minus 4 is 3. Well, wait a minute. That's not common. That's not the same number being added to go from term to term to term. In fact, there is a pattern here, but it's not geometric. It's not arithmetic. We've taken geometric off the board. This proves it's not arithmetic. The pattern is you'd add 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6. Probably you're going to add 7 next. That would be 29. Then 8, then 9, then 10. You're just adding successive integers on that. Uh, we could certainly find a, a sequence for that, but it's not something that we're actually studying by name here. So that's the way we go ahead and determine whether or not something's geometric or arithmetic or neither. You just try them. Just see if you're multiplying the same number. Divide two successive terms. Just do it for all the pairs. Um, see if you're arithmetic by adding the same number. Just subtract successive terms. See if the same. Um, or if you get this, this would be neither arithmetic nor geometric. The next one is, is a little bit easier than what we've done so far. Hopefully you can look at this and just say, well, 
Um, I'm fairly certain I know what that's going to be because we have the starting spot of 7. Now think how you get to 14 and think how from 14 to 28, 28 to 56, are you adding the same number every time? 7 plus 7 gives us 14 plus 7 is not 28. So it's not arithmetic. Let's say geometric. 7 times what gives us 14 times 2? 14 times 2 gives us, oh, 28. 28 times 2 gives us 56. If I were to divide this, uh, it's pair by pair. 14 divided by 7 is 2. 28 divided by 14 is 2. 56 divided by 28 is 2. Our common ratio for this geometric sequence is 2. Now, what's kind of interesting is that much like arithmetic sequences did, a geometric sequence has this, this very... Uh, repeatable pattern. It's, it's so repeatable that you can write as a formula. So there is a, a model for every geometric sequence. All we need to know is what the first term is and what our common ratio is. Now, just like we did arithmetic sequences, I really want you to see why there's an n minus 1 here. So think about this. If you burn up one term by starting somewhere, a sub 1, then how do you get to your 100th term? Well, if this is where you start, and this is how many times you have to multiply to get to whatever term you want, then let's say I wanted to get to the hundredth term. If I want to get to the hundredth term, I start somewhere, that's one term. I would need to multiply by 99 r's to get to the hundredth term. I'm going to say that one more time in just a slightly different way. By taking up one value by a starting number, in order to get to whatever term you need, it's one less uh, one less iteration of multiplication than the index uh, than the index you're trying to find. So so again, for the hundredth term, I'm using one as my starting term, and I need to multiply once to get the second term, twice to get the third term, uh, 99 times to get the hundredth term. This is losing one of those. It's it's taking away one um, necessary multiplication because you're starting with one of those terms. So we would say, all right, if I know that my common ratio is two and my starting value is seven, then I can easily write this in terms of a geometric sequence. I can say that this sequence is take your starting value. You don't necessarily need parentheses, but you're going to see it a lot, especially with fractions. Take your common ratio, that's the number you're multiplying over and over and over again, to the n minus 1. Do not multiply that and give me 14. Please. Break in order operations, you can't do it. Now, does it work? If I wanted to find the third term, check this out. If I want to find the third term, of these notes, 28. If I want to find a sub 3, Think about what that would mean. A sub 3 says, I would take 7 as my starting term. How many times would you have to multiply by 2 to get to your third term? Well, if this is my starting term that counts as 1, I'd multiply by 2 once for 14 and twice for 28. Not 3 times. That's why there's a minus 1 right there. And this would actually work. Uh, 3 minus 1 is 2. 2 to the second power is 4. And 7 times 4 would be 28. I hope I'm making that make sense to you that you're, you're only having to multiply by one less iteration of that common ratio than the term you actually want to find. So now we can find any term though. So if I actually find like the 10th term, man, this is really nice because you wouldn't have to continue this pattern, say multiply by two, 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 and then like four more twos or five more twos. You wouldn't have to do that. All you'd say if you wanted to find the 10th term, we know where we're starting, seven, And if we're starting at 7, we would have to multiply by 2 9 times to get to the 10th term. This takes up the first term. I need 9 iterations of multiplication, repetitions, or to get to the 10th term. So that would be 7 times 2 to the 9th. So we figure out 2 to the 9th and then multiply by 7, whatever that is. That is your 10th term. And you can do this with any term that you want to with the geometric sequence. Very similar idea to arithmetic. We're just multiplying over and over again. Let's go back to this geometric sequence and see if we can write that one. So in order to write any geometric sequence, we need to know where we start and what our common ratio is. We already found our common ratio. But if we know where we start, if we take a look at that, 
and understand that our starting value, our first term, is 2. Then our geometric sequence can be modeled by our starting number times our common ratio to 1 less than the nth term, so n minus 1. And this actually does work. If I want to find the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th term, I'd start at 2. I would need to multiply by negative 3. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Let's see if that works. Plug in your 5. Start at negative 2. That counts as 1. 5 minus 1 is 4. Negative 3 to the 4th power is positive 81. 81 times 2 is 162. It works just fine. This works very well. So let's go ahead. We're going to do uh, three more examples, these two, and then one more where I give you two terms. I'll show you a special way to deal with that. And then, uh, then we're done. This is all we have to deal with in geometric sequences. Then we'll add them up in our series. So if you were to look at that, how do we know when something is geometric? Well, we can always divide two successive terms or think about what number I'm multiplying over and over again. So how do I get from negative 3 to 1? Now, that might be kind of tricky to think of multiplication. Sometimes it really does benefit us to just divide all of our successive terms and see if it works out in the same common ratio. So if I take 1 divided by 3, notice it's always that way. It's always the second term divided by the first, or the third term divided by the second, the next term divided by your current term. So this one divided by that one. 1 divided by negative 3. Or negative one third divided by one. Or one ninth divided by negative one third. One divided by negative three, well, that's negative one third. Negative one third divided by one, well, something divided by one gives you back that something. That's negative one third. That's looking pretty good. This one we probably want to verify. Maybe multiply by nine. as an LCD, 1 ninth times 9 is 1, negative 1 third times 9 is negative 3, and we get negative 3, negative 1 third for every single time we compare two successive terms. That is a common ratio. So that's the reason why we do it in this order. Um, we want to make sure that when we divide, we're actually getting the common ratio. We don't want to divide negative 3 by 1 and get negative 3, because that would make us assume that r is negative 3. It's not. If we divide in the order I've just told you, take the second divided by the first, the third divided by the second, the fourth divided by the third, it'll always give you out your common ratio, and you don't have to change it. Our common ratio is negative one-third. With our first term of negative 3, we can easily go ahead and model this with a geometric sequence. We know it's geometric because it gives us a starting spot and it gives us the same exact multiplication term by term of negative one third. So our geometric sequence says you'd start at negative three, you'd have negative one third to the n minus one. And that's perfectly appropriate. There are a couple ways you can manipulate that, um, but this is just fine for most of our cases. So starting number, negative 3, that's what this says right here. And then your common ratio, negative 1 third, we figured that out, to the n minus 1. Again, remember that what this says is this takes up your starting position, your first term. Therefore, you need one less multiplication than the term you're trying to reach. Now, what happens when they give you uh, some term uh, but not the starting one? But they do give you the common ratio. Can you figure out an arithmetic sequence from that? It's actually not that hard to do. We just need to remember what this says. So this says any term that you want is modeled by that sequence. Well, let's plug in the things we know. What do we know? We know that the sixth term is 243. So if I put 243 for my term that I know. I know that's 243. While I don't know my first term, I do know my common ratio, and I also know that 243 is the sixth term. So my n has to be 6. So my term that I know is 243, and that represents the sixth term in that sequence. So let's just the formula. 
After that, you should be able to see that this is pretty nice to solve for R. It's not all that bad. So this is 243 equals A sub 1. Negative 3 to the fifth power is negative 243. And if you divide both sides by negative 243, you're going to get A sub 1 is negative 1. Now this allows you to plug this into this formula. So we now know the general formula for that sequence. We know the first term is negative one. You generally wouldn't want to write the negative one, but I'm showing that to you here. You know your common ratio. And that would be the form of our, of our sequence. We have our first term and our common ratio to the n minus one power. That's about all there really is to it. Uh, you're just trying to figure out from your sequence, what your, what your first term is, you need that. And then you need to know what your common ratio is. From here on all these examples, you should very easily be able to find whatever term you want. If you want to find the 50th term, you just plug in 50 or find the 50th term here, plug in, uh, plug in 50, wherever, right here, wherever that, that says to do. So find the seventh term, whatever, or just plugging in N and then using that formula to find the specific term of the sequence. So I'm gonna come back with one more and then we'll move on to our series. Let's try one more. So what happens when they say you have a geometric sequence, but they don't give you the common ratio and you really can't find it easily. We gotta set up something uh, from our, our, our formula for it and then use not really a system, but some way to set these things equal uh, to find our first term and to find our common ratio. So I'm gonna show you one way to do this. There are other ways to do it. I'm just showing you one. So if you know this is geometric and it says, I want you to find the formula for it, let's start using this and fill it as much as we can from the information we're provided. So if we know that our nth term is a sub one r to the n minus one, and we know an, an, a term, like a third term, and we know the value of it, well, we can set that up. So we know that one third is, I don't know the first term, I don't know the common ratio, but I know that's gonna be a three. So one third is our term. I don't know my first term, I don't know my common ratio, but I know this would represent the third term and we'd have to multiply two iterations of that common ratio to achieve one third. I also know the same, or something very similar here. I know that the sixth term equals 81. Now I know, I still don't know the first term, I still know the common ratio, but what we do have here is the ability to set parts of this equal. And so here's what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this, solve both of these for a sub one and set them equal to one another. We can also solve for one and set them equal and divide by um, a sub one, but uh, some it looks a little funny and it feels like you're dividing by a variable. You're not because it's a constant, but I like this a little bit better. It doesn't really matter, which is why I said there's multiple ways to do this. Um, but I'm gonna solve this for a sub one. So if we do, if we divide by r squared, and we divide by r to the fifth, multiple ways you can solve for, for this by dividing by different things. Uh, but if you have this, and that's the first term, and this, and that's the first term, then if you solve for something you know has to be equal, you can set these two things equal to one another. Now it might look a little funny, but think about this. This is a proportion and you can cross multiply and set equal. So three R squared times one or one times 81 R to the fifth, or realize that one over some variable equals one over some other variable. These two variables have to equal. Any way you go, you're gonna get three R squared equals 81 R to the fifth. Now, what we generally don't wanna do with variables 
We generally don't like to divide both sides by a variable because it could equal zero. Now, our common ratio can't equal zero. It's impossible. It's, it's a constant. Um, it's not zero because otherwise you would use zero every single time. That's not going to happen. So we are perfectly okay dividing both sides by 3r squared. All right, so 1 equals 27r to the third power. Well, wait a minute. Can you isolate that power 3? Yeah, sure. Let's divide by 27. And when we take a cube root, we're going to get one third. And that shows us what our common ratio is. From here, you have to go back and solve for your, your first term. This is why I like writing it like this, because it's already solved for you. We just have to plug in one third here. So if we do, be careful on your fractions. But if you plug in one third, one third squared is one ninth. So I'm using, just like uh, the kind of a substitution or system of equations works many times, I'm using this as solve for a sub 1, it's solve for my first term. I'm plugging in my r because I, now I know it. r squared is 1 ninth. 3 times 1 ninth is 1 third. So 1 ninth, 3 times 1 ninth is 1 third. And 1 divided by 1 third is 3. So we now know our common ratio. We now know our first term. And this is pretty easy to be able to, uh, to write this as, as our, our geometric sequence. So we'd say our geometric sequence is our first term, that's 3, times our common ratio, that's 1 third. To the n minus 1. Now there are some things we can do to manipulate this. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it. It's just, it gets a little bit confusing for a lot of students. Um, however, sometimes you're going to see this in the back of your textbook and go, how in the world did they get an n minus 2? Where'd that come from? Uh, here's where it comes from. If you see a, a number here and a base, kind of like a base here, that you could somehow make the same you can combine these via multiplication and addition of exponents. So, here's what I mean. If you can make this somehow into that common ratio, like 1 divided by 3, three so instead of 3 to the first power, think about a negative exponent, you could write this as 1 third to the negative 1 power. In your head right now, that has to be the same thing as 3. 1 third to the negative 1, reciprocate and change the sign, is 3. But you have it multiplied. What do you do when you multiply common bases? You add the exponents. So you could combine these, get the same base, you have the same base, and add your exponents. Negative 1 plus n minus 1 is not n. It's n minus 2. And you'll see some of that fancy stuff uh, where sometimes they won't show you this, they'll just show you that, and you go, but I got that. It is the same. This is usually just fine, uh, but sometimes you will see that, and I wanted to mention that to you. It is more concise, right? It is a little bit nicer to work with, but that's where that's coming from. So I hope that you learned in this lesson what a geometric sequence is, um, that it's similar to arithmetic, but instead of adding your multiplying, you can always find a common ratio by dividing all of your successive terms. Just make sure they're the same. You don't want to stop after 2 and assume you're right. You really want to check. Um, the formula is really easy. Just have your first term, have your common ratio with n minus 1. The n minus 1 is there because we need one less iteration of multiplication to get the term that we want, considering that our first term is taken up by a sub 1. Um, after that, I've given you as many examples as I could find or come up with about how to create a geometric sequence just from either some sequences themselves or knowing one term or several terms. Um, after that, I've shown you a way to take and make more concise some of these geometric sequences when they have a, a first term that can be written 
as your common ratio. Usually it's with a negative exponent, usually it subtracts here somehow. It can be positive exponent, it's just usually not. Um, and then you get that n minus two. So I hope it makes sense. What we're gonna do now is come back with a geometric series and learn how to add these sequences up.